Hello and welcome to a new ostrich video and currently we are at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport and getting the plane ready to depart to Berlin. And today I want to talk about ETOPS regulation. As our Tribule 7 is obviously a two-engine plane and over the Atlantic we will be more than 60 minutes away from any suitable diversion airport, we have to fly under ETOPS regulations. So, before ETOPS regulation got established in 1985, no two-engine plane was allowed to be further away than 60 minutes from a suitable diversion airport. Because if one engine fails, there's only one engine left and it wasn't believed that an aircraft can fly safely with only one engine for more than one hour. But if you want to fly over the Atlantic on an efficient routing, you are more than 60 minutes away from any diversion airport. So that meant before 1985 that you can fly this route only with a 747 or one of the big tri-jets. And if you are flying on a high demand route like New York to London, that's not a problem, so you can easily fill such a large plane. But if you want to fly a long route with low demand, like Boston to Bratislava for example, you have a problem. You can fly as an efficient routing with a 747 for example, but it would be likely that you only have a half full plane and therefore the plane is inefficient. And if you want to fly this with a small two engine plane that you can fill and therefore fly efficient, you are forced to take an inefficient um, detour over Greenland and Iceland. And in some other regions of the world, you not even have the option to take such a detour. So, you see the problem and why Boeing and Transworld Airlines pushed the FAA into establishing ETOS regulation. The point is that the 60 minute rule was established when we still had piston engine aircraft and especially the high powered piston engines failed regularly. That's why we call the Super Constellation the world's best three-engine plane. But a modern jet engine on the other hand is much much more reliable and in 1985 engine failures during flight were really unlikely. So after a set of certification flights, TVA's uh, Boeing 767s got a 120 minute ETOMS rating which meant they could fly up to two hours away from a suitable diversion airport and this opens the efficient transatlantic routes for these two engine planes. Now today we're going to uh, do this flight with a 777 and the 777 was constructed already with ETOPS in mind so it got a 100 minutes ETOPS rating right from the start and today ETOPS ratings are even more crazy so the newest Airbus A350, for example, has an ETOPS rating of 370 minutes. So that's 6 hours and 10 minutes. What means this aircraft can fly anywhere in the world except directly over the South Pole. But who's going to fly directly over the South Pole anyway? So in order to fly ETOPS, you first need an ETOPS rated plane. That means during the aircraft certification, it has to be proven that the aircraft has enough redundancy and safety equipment to fly for a prolonged time with only one engine running. And also the airline needs an ETOP certification to fly a desired route. So they have to prove that their maintenance, their training and the operations is up to the task. So let me give an example why this is important. So first of all we have to understand that the emergency is not necessarily over when the aircraft is safely on the ground. And the passengers are likely to have to leave the aircraft when it's on the ground. So let's take Cold Bay, Alaska as a diversion airport. Cold Bay is really conveniently a place between Asia and North America, so it's very likely to be chosen as an ETOPS diversion airport on this North Pacific route. And as a former Air Force base, Cold Bay has a runway that is long enough for every airliner you can dream of. But Cold Bay is a tiny town, it has about 150 inhabitants, so if you emergency land there with a 777, you easily double the headcount there and there's nowhere enough housing or food there to leave the passengers there 
for a long time, especially if you think on a harsh Alaskan winter. So your airline need to have a plan to provide enough food and shelter for the passengers and also to recover the passengers quickly from their Otherwise, it won't be allowed to use Gold Bay as a diversion airport and also to fly ETOPS on the routing. So this is basically how ETOPS regulations work, but now let's see how the ETOPS planning is uh, working in our sims. So let's hop into PFBX and take our flight as an example. Now here we have a typical flight where ETOPS rules would apply. So we are flying from New York to Berlin. And you see, in within the circles, so that you can toggle with the adequate airport switch, within the circles we would be within 60 minute range of a suitable diversion airport. And so if our route is always within the circles, we wouldn't have to bother with ETOPS anyway. But you see over the center, of the Atlantic, we have a region where we are leaving this circle. So to legally fly now from New York to Berlin, we have two options. We either could extend our route to the north, so what would add some uh, more nautical miles to our journey and therefore more fuel burn would make it less efficient, or we could fly under ETOPS rules. And as we have a Boeing 777, what is an ETOPS approved aircraft, we can fly under ETOPS rules. And to plan for this, we go in the advanced setting and you see already read ETOPS. You need an ETOPS planning if you want to fly this efficient routing. So we go to ETOPS and then select the scenario. For the 777, we have 180 minutes. As this is, an, is the ETOPS rating this aircraft has. And this would give us a diversion distance of roughly about 1200 nautical miles. And now we would also have to decide, or we would check the weather report and then decide, will we encounter ETOPS icing or not? That means we are dipping uh, below a certain altitude uh, in case of emergency, basically always, and will we encounter icing or not? Because then we have to switch anti-ice on, this would give us a lot more wear on the engines and so we have to plan for this. Actually we are doing this flight in the middle of summer and so ETOPS icing isn't an issue. And now you have to choose your diversion airport. So very popular if you're flying from New York to Europe is Ghana because this is a, one of the furthest points away you can fly. So Ghana has the code of CYQ. X. So we enter this and you see also this is the ETOPS range around Ghana. So you are fairly away from the Atlantic and if an emergency occurs within the circle uh, you would uh, be able to reach Ghana within 180 minutes. So within your ETOPS uh, planning. A second ETOPS uh, point we would need probably somewhere in Europe, so let's take an also very popular one in Shannon in Ireland, in e -N -N. And again, this draws the circles and you see the circles intersect and also the bit that wasn't uh, within the 60 minutes rule is now covered with both of uh, these circles. So, and this would be all we need uh, to fly legally across the Atlantic with this efficient routing, but let's say security is paramount, so let's add a third E F uh, diversion airport with uh, Keflavik, so for some reason if we have here we can also fly uh, to Keflavik if it's suitable. So uh, let's enter this and you see the next circle around Keflavik uh, with 180s and we have a region where all three circles intersect. So in this region we would have the choice of three diversion airports within 180 minutes. So very nice and if you ask yourself why I always call it circles and they aren't a circular shape, 
just simply the map is flat, the earth isn't. So, anyway, so let's finish the planning and then we can compute the flight. So, press this. You see, everything is fine here. And we can go to our operator flight plan. Everything looks normal, but because we are flying ETOPS, we have uh, this ETOPS critical fuel summary and then our equal time points. Because you are not flying an equal distance uh, from uh, the airport, you are flying in equal time. So because wind is coming from a different direction, you would maybe need, um, even if you are closer to let's say Gander, it would be maybe, because the wind is then coming from the back, maybe still faster to get to Keflavik. So well, these are our equal time points then, and you see for each pair of air, uh, airports we will have t uh, three sets of equal time points. So in the first one we have the one engine out option between decision between Gander and Keflavik. So if our engine fails before this point, what well, is about 216 nautical miles before 55 de uh, degrees north, 30 degrees west. We would fly to Gander. If it happens after this point, we would fly to Keflavik. So one engine failure, uh, we would do this. If we have a decompression, so we have to go below 10,000 feet. Uh, of course, the wind there will be a little bit different. So also this equal time point is usually a little bit different. And then we have all engines still running, but the compression you see again, you get a similar, uh, you get the same equal time point in this case, but depending on the winds, it's maybe a different story. And then we have the same thing uh, for the equal time point between Keflavik and Shannon. And how to enter this in the flight computer, I will show you now. So now we are north of Nova Scotia and let's enter our ETOPS planning into our flight computer. So let's go to the FMC and you see the LAX page is already open. So that's very convenient and let's look in the flight plan. So our first equal time point is our one engine out uh, point between Gander and Keflavik and this is 259 miles before 55 30 north so that's this waypoint so you just click on it then put the bar in it minus because it's before and then you enter 259 nautical miles and you enter this waypoint in front of uh, the waypoint this click execute and you see you now have the waypoint in your flight computer and it's called uh, 55 30 and 1 and i would recommend you to note this name down next to your equal time point so in a emergency situation where you're probably a bit more stressed that you don't have to think about which waypoint you entered first. And now we have all the equal time points in our flight computer with the very big advantage that we now can go to route data and we have our estimated arrival time at the point, we have our fuel at the point and all this information already at hand. So let's go back to the next page. And we have to do a step climb. Very nice. So let's put this in. And execute the step climb. And now you can also use the fix. This to draw circles around your desired airport. So let's do it for Gander first, so C, C, Y or Epsilon, what's first? Let's look it up. 
cyqx. I always like to make a 5 uh, nautical mile distance around it so that marks the airport on our distance and then we take our 1200 nautical mile ring around it and now we have it in the fix and as we are relatively close to Neufundland now we should see it's somewhere uh, on our map, so at the enlarges we, need, uh, we see our diversion airport and our ETOPS range is, we are way out of range, I mean we have a maximum 800 nautical miles on the navigation display and the ring around Ganda is 1200 nautical miles away. So we can also do this uh, for the other diversion airports, but you see the point. And this is how we can do our operation in our ETOPS operation in the flight. So let's go to the outside, watch our airplane and fly into the night over the in North Atlantic. So that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, as always, leave them in the comments below and I try to answer them as quickly and correctly as possible. Same for comments and then like, share, subscribe, do the usual YouTube things. And all that's left to say now for me is thanks for watching and see you at the next time. Bye bye.